Welcome to another live stream. I've I haven't really done a live stream for a while because uh, you know the blood from my blood hat got into these and I wasn't sure that they were working and then I got a new headset and um, you know that didn't want to play nice with Linux. Um, eh, what are you gonna do? But the old headset is working and so we're gonna go back we're going to go back in time a little bit. We're going to talk about one of the most famous games in Atari 2600 history. Unfortunately, it's not famous for any good reasons. I'm talking about Pac-Man, the game that many people say is responsible for the video game crash of 1983. That is not necessarily true. It did contribute, though. Consumer disappointment was so high with this game that that it really created a bad reputation for home video games in general, which was largely undeserved because there were a lot of good games out there. This just, um, you know, when compared to the arcade version, it, it wasn't what people were hoping for. And so for those of you who are not familiar with the game, and for those of you who are, let's play some Pac-Man. Oh, <laughs> I'm I'm clicking on the streaming window for for my emulator and not the actual thing. That's duh. All right, let's try this. Here we go. We've got Pac-Man, and uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what happened with this game because uh, you know I'm I'm certainly uh, very critical of the game. I, I don't play this a lot, uh, and I don't really have super fond memories of it. Uh, like many people, I was disappointed when I saw this when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, I had seen Pac-Man in the arcade, and this, 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 this was not it. Uh, you know, we can talk a little bit about some of the things that keep it from being Pac-Man. Uh, the fact that at the beginning, rather than getting a pleasant tune, we get some some phone tones that are screeching at you. Uh, the lack of cherries. You know, instead we get a box. The uh, the fact that Pac-Man uh, only looks from side to side and never looks up and down, or the fact that rather than kind of doing a, a waka waka, you know, pie chart type thing uh, when he opens his mouth. His mouth just sort of, he dislocates his jaw and, oh, I'm not paying attention to the game. Uh, it, it's not a very good game anyway. But, <laughs> you know, you can, the, the ghosts are flickery and, uh, you might even not even see them on this live stream, depending on the frame rate. Uh, you may be seeing uh, a lot of blank things happen, and that's because it's multiplexing. Uh, multiplexing is when you've got, yeah, you know, because the Atari could only produce, I think, two images at any given time. Then Pac-Man is shown all the time, but the the computer is constantly drawing a ghost in each of the four different locations, and when one ghost is there, the other ones disappear. You can sort of, you know, it, it causes a flickery effect. It's a way to solve the problem. I can see the ghosts on my end, but they're, they're kind of transparent. And uh, believe it or not, they are different colors, but it's really hard to tell. So these are the kinds of things that when consumers saw this, uh, they were justifiably disappointed. Let's talk a little bit though about why, why this happened and, uh, and let's give uh, the programmer Todd Fry a, a little bit of a break. Um, <laughs> they, they look vaguely puke colored. <laughs> it's so true. Uh, so, all right, the, the programmer's name was Todd Fry, and a lot of this information I'm getting from uh, the Wikipedia article. 
And uh, I don't know whose decision it was, uh, whether it was his or somebody else at Atari, but the decision was made that Pac-Man would be made with a 2K cartridge. 2K. Okay, think about that. 2K. Um, I, I, I've got emails that are larger than 2K. That's just not a lot of, uh, of memory to work with. So Todd Fry w was, and you know, I don't know if he's still around, uh, he probably still is, an extremely talented programmer. He wanted to look at the original machine hardware and try to emulate it to the best of his ability. He didn't get to do that. Instead, you know, he got to play the game a lot. And what he set about to do was capture as many of the functions of the game as he could and cram it into that little 2K cartridge. And that includes making a two-player mode. I think that that's one of the things that really hurts this game, because his decision to make a two-player mode meant that he had to double the amount of screen memory he was using to remember where the dots were, and have it be able to flip back and forth between players. Now, um, could it have done without a second player mode? Yeah, actually it could have, but he was trying to give the arcade experience. So in order to, to facilitate that, he created a maze that was repetitious and used the same pattern over the entire maze, which you can see that in here. Uh, and that saves memory, so clever but not really fun to play. Uh, Atari had an internal rule that said that only space games could have a black background. Um, you know, that's... Looking back, uh, that's that sounds like the kind of rule that a business person would make and somebody who's never really spent much time in an arcade because uh, obviously you'd be able to tell the colors of the ghosts a lot better if there was a black background but instead we've got a blue background you know todd did the best that he could with another limitation uh, uh let's see there's uh yeah, there were 4K cartridges available at that time. They were brand new, but uh, they chose not to do it. So that, that creates a lot of functional limitations. Now, within the limitations that, that he was presented with, we got four ghosts. And they are different colors, even though they're hard to tell that they're different colors. Uh, we got a bonus item in the middle of the screen. Uh, we got Pac-Man able to navigate a maze and eat dots. So functionally, this game has everything that Pac that it needs to be Pac-Man, except that it doesn't look like Pac-Man. It doesn't sound like Pac-Man. The 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 pattern the maze doesn't look like the maze in Pac-Man. It just doesn't. It's just not that much fun. And, um, and yes, E.T. was the other game that made Atari uh, kind of notorious for bad games. That was another big one. So let's just take a look here. Uh, I'm going to go to Ms. Pac-Man. Because Ms. Pac-Man for the Atari is not remembered with the derision is that the right word? Derision? That, uh, that uh, Atari Pac-Man is. And I think that you can see why. And the first big difference is 4K cartridge. Yeah, listen to that. We have Ms. Pac-Man music. Now, granted, uh, we've still got a blue background, but the ghosts are far less flickery. Um, Ms. Pac-Man may be only a single color sprite, but she's got her bow, she's got her eye, she's got fruit, fruit that's bouncing through. There's a little bit of flicker there. Uh, I'm hoping that you're able to see the ghosts. I'm able to see the ghosts. 
Uh, the sound effects are far more pleasant and less offensive to the the sensibilities. You know, this is actually a a good, competent version of Ms. Pac-Man. And the maze is very similar to the arcade maze. The ghosts are coming out of the top of the ghost home. So... Uh, this game has a lot going for it, and uh, and obviously uh, people don't think back to this game and think, oh, you know, that sucked. Uh, I, I still play this game from time to time, so uh, you know, this is this is good. I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna try and rush through here rather than playing for points. Although I can't resist ghost chasing. I just I, I can't do it. I, I have to chase ghosts. Yeah, yeah, come on, come here, come here! Oh, no, 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 no! Yes! Okay, that's good. Alright, so, go to the next stage. And now, see, notice we're up to a strawberry, so we can actually have different fruits rather than just a, a bonus box in the middle of the screen. And we're going to go through here, we got our two tunnels. Once again, in a very, very faithful maze. Um, I mean, not super faithful, but it certainly captures the spirit of the arcade maze for Ms. Pac-Man. I know, I said I was going to rush through this, and I'm, I'm going for every bonus, and I need, to, I need to shut off the OCD. But you have to understand, OCD is what makes Pac-Man Pac-Man. <laughs> you know, it's that obsessive need to eat every dot, and to eat every fruit, and eat every ghost. And here I go again. No, I'm not going to get those two. All right. I'm going to let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Oh, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. It's terrible. It, it is so much better. Uh, thank you for joining us, Quentin. Okay, now, take a look at this. Look, we have multiple levels. Look at that. Multiple levels. Now, this, the arrangement here doesn't look much like the arcade arrangement. Um, I'm going to forgive it because uh, because it is blue. The, this, the arcade version was blue, and this one's blue. There's an orange, and it's an orange orange. Orange orange. And I'm going to get eated here really soon. No, no, I'm going to do the eating. Yeah. Yeah. Come here. Come here. No, I'm not going to get him. Darn it. All right. So let's uh, go around here. Ooh, orange, 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 orange. No, 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 no. Son of a... Oh. Okay. That's all right. I've got... I, I can get revenge. Come here! Yeah. Get over here! No! Oh, you... Okay, this is embarrassing. Alright, I, I need to pay a little bit closer attention. Well, I guess I don't, because um, I, I don't know how far people really want me to go into this game. Because uh, we've got hacks and homebrews to, uh, to, to look at also. I know, and and now I'm now I'm getting uh, disrupted by reading comments while I'm trying to navigate the maze. Pac-Man is not a good game for trying to uh, to read and talk and respond at the same time. All right, there we go. Pretzel. So let's uh, let's get to the next level, unless I do something stupid and die. Just just to show you that we get another level after this one. All right, come on, here we go, here we go, pretzel, pretzel, pretzel me, pretzel me, woman! I'm going to start saying that to my wife. Hi, honey, pretzel me, woman! No, no, no! Oh, ah! Okay, well, that's enough of that. <laughs> She's getting up and walking away. <laughs> I love you, honey. Uh... <laughs> All right, let's, uh, so now we've seen what can happen. Oh, I disappeared while I was getting the fruit. That's interesting. Um, so 
notice that that's a much better game. And, and they used a 4K cartridge. Here's what else they did. It's only one player. They didn't bother with the other players, so you didn't have to keep track of a second score or second set of lives or dot arrangement or level number or any of those variables. So all these things enabled them to make a much better version of Pac-Man just by making some different decisions. And, you know, I'm going to tip my hat a little bit to Todd Fry because in terms of achieving his goals of creating a Pac-Man game that did all the functions of the arcade game, he, he did achieve all of his goals, and he did it through clever programming. And I think that uh, that the game has gotten a lot of a lot of crap over the years just because it, it it was so disappointing to so many people. But he actually did some amazing things. The only thing that that really needed to happen was, first of all, Atari shouldn't have been so confident as to make what was it, 13 million copies of a game when they only had nine million co uh, consoles on the market. I mean, that's just dumb. Okay, <laughs> that is overconfidence at its peak. Also, uh, they really should have had uh, some people look at the game and give them some critical feedback and and you know some if they had not been kind of operating in a bubble then they they probably would have been able to uh to go back and see things that could have been done differently and and come out with a better game so now let's see what some other people have done and uh, here's one. Here's one that I that I really like. This is uh, this is a hack of Ms. Pac-Man, where somebody took Ms. Pac-Man and then turned it back into Pac-Man to see what it could have been had they used the 4K cartridge and abandoned the two-player option. And I really like this version. I actually play this one a lot. Doesn't mean I'm good at it, but I play it a lot. Huh? Music! Yeah! Oh. Pressing the wrong buttons. There we go. Look at that! If this had come out on in stores when, when they announced Pac-Man, then, uh, then I think that people would have been really, really excited and uh, the and I think things would have gone very differently in 1983. You know, this sounds like Pac-Man. It looks like Pac-Man. I can I can see the different colors of the ghosts. They're not flickery. Uh, can you see all the ghosts? Okay, it's hit and miss there. So they they did some flicker management, but there is still some some flickeriness. That being said, and notice that uh, the siren tone gets higher as you clear more dots. That's another thing in Pac-Man. It's a subtle thing, but it adds to that sense of urgency as you get to the end of a level. Here we go. Bam! Woo! Yeah. And now, look at this. We got a strawberry. You know, once again, it's it's the little things. It's the aesthetic things. It's the uh, the colors and the sound effects and and the the little extras that that made Pac-Man addictive. And unfortunately, all those things were kind of lost in the original Atari 26 Pac-Man. And here we go, here we go. Oh, now wait, don't go away! Don't go away! Really? Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes, we have Pac-Man. Yes, yes, oh, I'm gonna so clean up here. Oh, I'm so gonna clean up here.
No, 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 no. Yeah, there, let's go down this way. Oh, he is so aggressive. You know, why, why are you such a hater, bro? You're delicious, though. That rhymed, and it's time. I'm a poet, but I don't know it. My feet sure show it, because they're long fellows. Sorry, I'm sorry. My grandma used to say that. I, I apologize. Uh, so, yeah, we, now, th this is it. You're not going to get intermissions. Um, the, uh, the fruit does continue to change, and uh, I, I don't even remember how high they go. Uh, I'm not planning on staying on that long because uh, I just can't imagine that it's that interesting to watch. Uh, you know, one of the one of the uh, shortcomings of Pac-Man is repetition. The board never changes. Uh, P Ms. Pac-Man is better because you have multiple levels. Come on, come on, come on, come on! Ah, jerk! All right, come here. It is so addictive, though. I mean, even as I'm talking and knowing that this is a live stream, that there are people watching, um, I and not wanting to make this long and boring, it's really hard for me to press the stop button. Especially when I just cleared another level! Woo! Yeah. We're up to the apple. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm, I'm, I'm stopping. So, that is, uh, that is one of the homebrew uh, hacks of, uh, of Ms. Pac-Man, turning it back into Pac-Man. I really like that one. I've always really liked that one. Uh, let's, let's go here. And so, there are, there's another version that I think is very interesting. And uh, this one... You know, I've got my cat on my lap, and my my legs are falling asleep. Oh, here, here, right here. It, it, it's a cat. This is Wesley, and he's very, very sleepy. Hi, Wesley. All right. Now I can move my legs. Ah, there. Okay, don't worry. Wesley's still there. See? Yeah. Can you, can, can you see Wesley? There we go. Yeah. Okay, so... I, uh, I actually can't see the little uh, thing that shows me what's on my screen because uh, the, uh, the Atari window is covering it. So I hope that you got to see Wesley. All right. Uh, this is very interesting because this is where somebody went back and did an AK version of Pac-Man, but they started with the original, uh, the, the original uh, Atari 26 Pac-Man. And so... It's very, very similar in some ways, but you can see that he did some cool things. He created a startup screen. Uh, the maze is the same, but, but you know, he's got other things going on. So this is a very interesting hack, and uh, this is done by a guy named Kurt Howe. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot of time and effort went into this, and so I think it deserves some respect. So there we go. We've got an actual opening and closing mouth Pac-Man that... Oh, this is also a very hard version of this game. Uh, Pac-Man... Pac-Man's mouth opens the way that it's supposed to. He actually faces all four directions. And notice the black background! I mean... Yes, we still have flickery ghosts, but I can tell that they're different colors now. It's amazing. I also like his ghosts. They look good. The, uh, the way that the sprites are animated looks good. They are fast. Okay, I'm, I'm not necessarily doing a good job of playing this game. And look at the scores come up. You know, he managed... Uh, uh, you know, Atari pixels are big. <laughs> I mean, they're the size of bricks, 
and he still managed to get a legible 400 and even a 1600. Get over here! Come on! Ah! Oh, I got greedy. I, I, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, I need to get off of this board because um, I'm doing terrible. I'm on my last guy, and this is... Uh, what's that? The first level? Oh, crap! Oh, I'm, I, I need to pay attention. Alright, here we go. See? 200, 400, 800. Oh, why did I go that way? I don't know. I don't know. You know, what I should do is only live stream games that I'm good at playing. Of course, then I guess I wouldn't live stream anything. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, no! Uh, okay. The, the ghost that came out of the ghost home is the blue ghost, and he's light blue as opposed to dark blue, and I almost ate him. Yeah, I never quite understood the, uh, the up and down facing, uh, tunnel either. Uh, you, you know, I, my guess is that uh, when Todd Fry was programming, he figured that since Arcade Pac-Man was, was uh, taller rather than wider, that uh, he would sort of just tip the screen sideways, but he didn't tip it entirely. Alright, I'm going to try and make it off of this board alive. Okay, look at this! Animations! I, I guarantee this stuff is probably half of that 8K just to be able to have intermissions. Yeah. There we go. Oh, I got greedy again. Okay. I'm going to do one more. One more? Uno mas? Okay. Okay, this time I'm going to pay attention. Now, obviously, there is no way that Todd Fry was going to be able to do this. Uh, he, he just didn't have the memory to, to do all of this. But he might have been able to do some of it. You know, I think that had somebody said to the Atari execs, Hey, hey, hey dipshits. Um, Pac-Man has a black background. You you need to have a black background. Then uh, then they might have been able to get around that one. Uh, having if uh, if he had used the 4K cartridge, he probably would have been able to do the Pac-Man facing all four directions. That would have made a big difference. Uh, also, his Pac-Man with the uh, with the you know mouth that just sort of opens and closes like like a C-clamp. Uh, I, I, I'm not in favor of that decision. You know, it just doesn't look like Pac-Man. So, you know, that's something where a second set of eyes saying, hey, look, don't do it this way, probably would have... See, I wasn't going to get greedy, and then I did. Uh, probably would have gone a long way. So those are things that, you know, not... Those weren't so much technical limitations as just design choices that just didn't work and, and really needed a second opinion to say, hey, by the way, this sucks. These ghosts are too fast when they're blue. I can't catch them. I've already squandered a guy here. I'm gonna ignore the ghosts. I'm not gonna ignore the strawberry. Can't go that far. And boom. And come up here. There we go. No, no, no. Stop hovering around the remaining dots, you freaks!
There we go. Alright. And intermission. That's okay, that, that music. I, I have to imagine that programming music for the Atari 2600 is not easy. <laughs> yeah. Run! Just run! I am Pac-Man, destroyer of worlds! That's right. Go away! I know, I'm... This is... This is shameful. I'm sorry for to all the people with OCD out there who are being driven crazy about me just not even trying to get those ghosts. Look at how fast they are! Oh my gosh! That's criminal! That ain't right! Yeah, you come to me! There we go. And... Alright, yes! <laughs> Screw you guys! I'm going home. Woo! I, I, I really want to see the next animation. That's what I'm trying to get to here. But boy, the ghosts are getting fast. And these ghosts are smart. Y you know, that's... And I don't know that... Uh, I don't know if Kurt Howe did any reprogramming of the AI on the ghosts. Uh, I kind of suspect that he did not. Because the original Pac-Man ghosts were smart. The problem is that... Uh, you know, when you have a game with uh, some really unpleasant sound effects and uh, a repetitive board, when you have aggressive ghosts, the the game just annoys you. You know, there's you're not getting well. Huh? They're staying all there. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh, I have to go after them now. Oh, you jerks! How did you get so far away? Well, I still killed a bunch of you. You can't really kill ghosts, because they're ghosts. You know. The... Uh... Oh, no! Ah! 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 I should have gone. Oh, okay. I don't know if I'm going to make it off of this level. I'm going to try. Pink, why, why are you there? I'm not going to make it off of this board. Oh, son of a... Uh. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think the scary music is uh, just because it's hard to program music for the Atari. Uh, now, granted, the uh, I, I've seen some hacks and homebrews where people did a... Uh, did some pretty good jobs but I it sounds like you they were trying to do like two like like a like a two channel thing um, but it didn't work ah <sighs> uh, let's see any others should I uh, let me see now obviously I've played this one before and uh, and this one is probably the best the best Atari Pac-Man that has ever been done, and uh, and I really like it. I wish I had music at the beginning. That's the that's the only thing that's missing. But this one is uh, just amazing. Um, I would not have expected the Atari Twenty Six Hundred to be able to achieve this, but uh, but I mean. It's it's got the original maze. It's uh, it, it's got some nice, pleasant sounds. Yeah, listen to that. Oh, and that you know, eating the ghost and the eyes going back to the home. I mean, it's just this is this is a beautiful version of this game, and uh, I actually play this one a lot. Although uh, you can't tell because I still am terrible at it. C case in point, um, that that happened. 
uh, which is a demonstration of my lack of skill at this game. This is a hard version of this game. I'm just going to throw that out too. This is this is not. These are smart ghosts, and uh, and they're pretty aggressive. And even though it's not moving super super fast, uh, it's it's very challenging, especially if you are trying to like go for the points. Like trying to chase ghosts on this, they're slippery. No, no, no! And see, I also get into this one. No, 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 no! <sighs> well, that was embarrassing. That that was some terrible, terrible Pac-Man playing. Um, yeah, you're right. The ghosts are very flickery on this one. Um... I think it's because uh, Dennis Debro, uh, that's the programmer on this one. Uh, he has a lot going on. He's got the uh, he's got the score flashing. He's he's got the power pellets flashing. So I think that because he's got so much going on, uh, he's sacrificing a little bit due to the multiplexing. So. Um, yeah, it's but still, um, all in all, uh, just amazing work. Uh, yeah, I feel like like I would love to get into programming for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, but you know, you just can't do everything. So instead, I uh, I I get these homebrews and I show them on a live stream so that other people can enjoy them. I downloaded these from I think it was Atari Age. Uh, and, and, you know, there's tons and tons of hacks and homebrews out there done by people who love video games and, uh, and want to create what they, you know, this, this is, this is a labor of love, obviously done by somebody who really wanted to see what you can do with, uh, Atari, with the Atari in terms of making it everything that you hoped it would be when you were a kid. And, uh, and I would love to see these like on an Atari flashback. You know, I, 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 I don't know what the legalities would be, but I would just love to see them do an Atari flashback that, ha that had all of these things in it. So, all right, I think that that's it. Uh, this has been fun. I'm glad to be getting back into the live streaming. I'm glad that my headset works. So uh, my cat left my lap, though. That's a little sad. So, all right. Uh, everybody, happy gaming. And uh, I look forward to my le next live stream. And thank you for joining me.